Thanks for joining us today on the Family Imprint Show. I'm here with a special guest. Her name is Allison Smith, and she also supports family. From the direction of supporting parents who may be having some challenges with their children at home, and I'd love for you to share with us, Allison, your approach and how you work with families. Absolutely, I would love to. So I focus on the parents' level of the generations. I know you look at a lot of the dynamics all along in the different generations. Mm -hmm. So looking at the parents and what's coming up for them as they're parenting. So if they're losing their cool a lot and they're, they're just not satisfied with the way they're interacting with their kids or how they're speaking or how they're not managing their own emotions and figuring out what we can do about that. And we definitely look back at, at patterns that have been going on, maybe that they've, um, they've learned through their parents or um, the, the culture around them and looking at bringing all of those to their awareness so they can make a choice. Is this really in alignment with my values or would I like to start doing things differently? And then giving them the tools to begin that process and following that through until they're at a level they feel they can, they can manage on their own. I, I teach the skills as well. So how do we calm down in the moment? <laughs> um, how do we change our child's behavior and help them learn why it's important to cooperate with us rather than teaching skills that will manipulate or force the children mm. to cooperate out of fear of consequences, for example. That's it. That's it. And so share with me how you came into this work. What, what drew you into your interest in supporting parents? It was really an evolution. Mm -hmm. I began my adult professional career as a teacher oh. and I did that for about 10 years and I loved the act of teaching and guiding and questioning and helping children see a different way of looking at things. In particular, I found myself very drawn to the classroom environment in terms of the uh, emotional, psychological environment, mm -hmm. teamwork, let's, let's uh, solve our problems collectively, collaboratively as a class. So we had team meetings and things like that. I also noticed I was spending a lot of my time uh, helping children um, resettle after, after their breaks, after recess and lunch and all of those kinds of things because they were they seemed to be bringing me a lot more problems mm. than other teachers were getting. At first I thought, what am I doing wrong? Mm. That my kids, my kids are having all these problems. Mm. But then I realized it's because I created that relationship with them and I nurtured it mm. to be open. And so they were bringing me things that maybe they had been challenged with for a while because they felt I wanted to support them with that. So Bye. we would look at emotional emotional literacy tools, um, communication, relationships, things like that. So that real classroom environment and as well as their inter, interpersonal and intrapersonal lives. Well, I love what you're saying there, Alice, and this feeling of building that relationship with the child from teacher student. So they felt much more open to say, hey, this happened and I need some help navigating it. Exactly. Just, you know, the teacher speaking and mm -hmm. kids maybe have to, you know, keep it inside and then bring it all home and share it with the parents right. if we're lucky, if they're still open enough to do that. And uh, I've always loved kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've, I had a certain um, belief system about the best way to raise children. I was the perfect parent, obviously, be, until I had kids. <laughs> Aren't we all? It's all much exactly. easier there, right? How yeah. hard can so this then, be? Uh, <laughs> and I had kids um, and, and big wake up call for me. Mm -hmm. As you know, parenting brings out our strong personalities. It brings out our uh, strengths and weaknesses and it puts a spotlight on those areas that need attention. Absolutely. And, and so um, I realized I had some, a lot of personal work to do. I was a bit of a control freak. I'm a recovering perfectionist. Nice. So we can't, we can't be perfectionist with children or we'll drive ourselves insane. That's it. And them along the way. 
Yeah. And I knew I didn't want to impact them in that way. And I, I knew I sort of had this vague vision of the kind of parent I wanted to be, but mm-hmm. so much was in the way. So I started studying and I did a lot of personal development work myself. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I was sharing all of these sort of newfangled parenting strategies I was learning about gentle parenting, conscious parenting, positive parenting, positive discipline, all those sorts of terms, yeah. which basically is how do we work as a team with our kids? Yeah. Staying a strong leader with our boundaries, our expectations, and without, without being that force yeah. that um, had to re- resort to control. And, and I know so much has changed from even, say, a decade ago as mm-hmm. to what we now understand about development, attachment sciences, how we show up as parents and how we influence our children. Mm. We know that now that unless we have a lot of influence with someone, influence through respect and empathy and understanding, unless we have that, we have to rely on some form of force, whether it's verbal or do this or I do that sort of mentality. So I really help families and some need more assistance than others. Some just get it right away and say, yes, this is what I was looking for. I didn't know it had a name, but this is it. Mm -hmm. So this way of looking at their child's behavior, not as they're trying to bother me and give me a hard time, because that's us from our place of overwhelm or lack of skills or lack of of sleep. sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so looking at their child as someone in need yeah. and that shifts our strategies. It, it's almost like magic. Mm. Once we get that for ourselves and see how that changes our interactions with our child and their response to us mm-hmm. and our ease with them, it is like magic because it is a leadership position, right? Yes, it is. It's not, it's not a better than it's not no. a, um, I should be respected, but you don't need it. It's, it's really, I'm bringing my skills as a leader to help you get through your own journey because it is their own journey for a child, right? It's not well, that's what helps ours. them to feel safe. Of course, feeling mm-hmm. that mom and dad have the lead and I get yeah. to be the little one in this relationship. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not that we have more power per se, Uh, We need to have control and power over ourselves and the environment and the structure and all of those things, Mm -hmm. but it's actually counterproductive and it's, it works against us in the long run Mm -hmm. to seek that control over our child. Absolutely. Because then we of course lose the relationship and we don't have that ability to Mm -hmm. really parent well. And then we have to keep looking for bigger consequences or Mm -hmm. more uncomfortable ones or what do I do? Do I, do they have to be home by seven when they're 16? Like, what do I then do? I run out of things because they're bigger and maybe they have a strong, a strong personality and they're not putting up with it. That's it. We've upped the ante too many times. Yeah. And where do you go? Yeah. And, and we want most of the parents that I talk to, they're the kind of people who want to have a good relationship with their child Ooh. when their child is an adult and maybe has kids of their own. They, of they look ahead and they know what they want. They want to be friends with their child yeah. when their child's an adult. Of course. They, they want a really true that as an end goal. Exactly. Yeah. But they're not quite sure of the middle part, which is about 20 years. That's it. Well, it can get messy as we're both parents. I think we know that to be true. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious how many times you might work with a family and then uncover, ah, this is the parents unhealed childhood experience. That's Mm -hmm. kind of just bubbling over. And what's your approach in working with that? It, it happens a lot. In fact, Mm -hmm. most When we really get honest with each other and dig in, we find that most of it really is about the parent. And perhaps they've they've been hurt a lot as a child and they're keeping some emotional distance and they're not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Or perhaps they were just brought up a certain way and they don't know how else to do it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be permissive. 
No. They don't want to let their child make all the choices. They know that's not healthy, but they've never been exposed to this idea that there's a third option. Got it. Um, there are times that it, there is some, some trauma, mm -hmm. whether it's emotional or otherwise. Uh, there are cases where I'll refer to someone else who has more expertise in that area that mm -hmm. I feel that I won't serve them that as well. But then we're working on, okay, so what do I do in this situation with a child? What about when they won't go to bed? So we can continue to work on the skills mm -hmm. as they're healing in some other areas. God, but on looking at those belief systems, yeah. becoming more aware of how we're operating, what our patterns are mm -hmm. and challenging those is holding it up to the light and saying, is this actually true? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's not. Now what? And we look at options for beginning to shift our habits and our thoughts to a different way of being so that we can show up the That's way that we want it. with our kids. Well, I know for myself, it wasn't until I became a mom and that great love all parents have for their children really is to look at, okay, I've got to, you know, get more inward with some of these things that I want to change in myself so that I show up differently as a mom that the frustration doesn't get the better of me or, or the day and all of its challenges. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so now I know you've prepared a gift for, for the audience of the family imprint show. Could you share a little bit about that? I'm going to leave a link close to our interview, but please Fantastic. let them know what it's all about. Yeah. So I, I'm really excited to share my ebook mm. with your listeners. You remember me talking about, the foundation of this, this way of being with our kids. Mm -hmm. And I call it the gentle parenting manifesto. Mm -hmm. Love the title. Yeah. I, it, it just works. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's got some philosophy in it, but it's in easy to read bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. it, it's got three uh, tenets or principles mm -hmm. and it goes into some details for each and it gives examples of phrases or affirmations that we can tell ourselves to keep top of mind what it is we're trying to create mm -hmm. what we're focused on for our goals some phrases we can use for ourselves or with our kids to keep on track and so it, it's it's like a guidebook it's that that book we always wished came with our baby <laughs> <laughs> Love um, it. You know, it, I couldn't include everything. There are lots of books out there that have all of those things, but this is a nice, quick, easy read with nice, pretty pictures that you can access uh, just to, to keep things top of mind and at a glance to understand that big picture of what we're trying to create as parents. Well, it sounds like it's in great bite-sized pieces for the busy family. You know, everybody mm -hmm. is always off and running. So nice to get that support in little pieces. Yeah. And often we don't have time to read the whole book or we get part way into it and we get stuck and we're like, well, I don't, this doesn't exactly apply or how do I implement it with my child who's different That's or right. our situation is unique. And so this gives some guidelines. And then if they want help with the implementation, I'm there with a lot of different um, ways to work with me. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy practice to come on onto the Family Imprint Show and share some of your wisdom. And if there was one tip you might have for the listener around how to go back into family life with a little lighter heart and a little more ease, what might that be? Hmm. Focusing on the relationship. Okay. If you do that first and foremost, and again and again, and most often, a lot of the other things will take care of themselves. Mm. That's a beautiful so, set point. Relationship first. Yeah, that's excellent. And then it will help to orient and navigate from there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, Allison. Thanks again so much. Thank you so much. It was great to be on with you. Mm -hmm. I'd love to talk to you anytime. Well, that sounds great. We'll keep in touch. Absolutely.